Hi everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the village's newcomers. Gizmo's running around here somewhere. We're going to bring you another in our series of home improvement shows today. Living in Florida, there's something we have to do that we didn't do back in Indiana. And that is replace this pressure tank. This pressure tank sits on top of your water heater. We didn't have a monstrosity like this back in Indiana. Our home is six years old, six and a half, and it's time to replace it. So I bought this one on Amazon. It's exactly like the one we have in there, the PFX T51, $66 is what this cost. Um, supposed to relieve pressure before you have a serious incident. Now your water heater builds up corrosion and such, and so it ought to be drained once a year. When we moved here, I got rid of all of our stuff like this, so I bought a little hose, a drain hose. We're going to drain the water heater. We're going to shut off all the breakers first. Tom will be the expert. He's going to tell us what to do. We're going to drain the water heater, and we're going to replace that tank. And it's something that you may need to do. Both of these items came from Amazon. We'll have them in the uh, description of the video, and hopefully we'll get this changed without a hitch. You ready to do it? I'm ready. Today's project, the water heater. Well, back in Indiana, we lived in that house 34 years. We had to change water heaters once or twice, but I don't remember ever draining the water heater. Do you recommend that? I would do it at least, well, we live in a new area, and that means that the water main has been broken into a few times uh, as they build new homes. So you always have the possibility of sand and dirt in the lines. I would at least do it once every three years. Okay. So we're going to do that today. We're going to drain the tank. I bought a hose just for it because when you downsize, you get rid of all the stuff you have. So I bought this hose. We're going to hook this up and drain. And we're going to go a step further. Let's open the door here and let's show them what I'm talking about. This is very typical, by the way. The furnace and the water heater, they're in the garage. They're behind this door in most people's garage. Not all. And there is the water heater. Pretty convenient. Here's the furnace, <laughs> right? It is very convenient here. And I got a feeling that if we had a leak, not all, but most of it would come out here and roll out of the garage. Yes, sir. Well, you've got a catch pan in the bottom and that is plumbed actually underneath your house and probably out near your air conditioner. So okay. that would be the first spot. But yes, you're right. It's downhill well, from here and all good. There's that tank that we're talking about. Now, what's the name of that tank? That's a water expansion tank on a closed plumbing system. And so what that is, is on a closed system, you have no other place for water to go when it expands within your home. You have back pressure uh, preventers out on the street and of course your faucets inside. So you may be gone and your water heater heats up. You do have a pressure relief valve right here for safety, but to a lesser extent and also for cold water you've got an expansion tank now the tank looks like new but i know that it's never been changed and they recommend it every five years or so well they're warranted for five years and there's an easy way of checking them jerry we use a, a, a wrench um, and you tap because there's a diaphragm in this tank and the bottom part should be full of water and the top should be nothing but air now if you use a tool, and I'll get one, an uh, easy way to check it is to use uh, uh, some kind of a tool, a wrench or a screwdriver, and listen. And you tap on the bottom and move your way to the top. It should sound full on the bottom and empty on the top. Uh, a fresh one, the one I just replaced recently, was very marketable. Thump, 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 and real high pitched at the top. I suspect this one may be leaking a little bit, possibly not all the way bad yet, but uh, it's time to be replaced. All right, good. Well, the one I bought, so the viewers will know, I got it on Amazon, it was $66 shipped to the home. So we're gonna put that on today. We're gonna take this one off. We need a few tools for this job. Uh, we'll need a bigger wrench. We need an air compressor uh, to pump air. We need a hose to drain the tank. I guess above all, we need to make sure the power's off. That's correct. And a few safety things to begin with. Because we're dealing with 220 here at the, at the water tank and we're actually going to drain this, that means there's an electrical element at this level and another one down lower. We want to turn off the power to the tank 
over at your service box so that we don't have that getting too hot burning without being submerged in the water. The other thing we want to do is turn the water off coming into the house and then we'll show you how to do the rest of it from here and how you drain the tank. Now Tom has a lot of experience in this. I would encourage you to get a plumber to do this or somebody that has experience but it is something you could tackle yourself but again you know we're just doing it informational value we're not plumbers we're not electricians so don't trust us 100 percent but this is how we're doing it today and just wanted to give you a look at it i'll go over and turn off the power first thing we've connected a hose and we're going to drain that water right out the garage one more thing to do is to shut off the water to the house I just simply do that right there. That's water is off. Sorry, Linda, if you're doing anything important. <laughs> okay, now that we've got those two very important things done, just a quick explanation so you understand how this works. Pretty simple. Uh, in this particular case, cold water is coming in from the street through this valve down, and then of course up to the bottom of the diaphragm. Your water heater heats it with the use of these two elements. And when you turn the faucet on in the house, the hot water is going out there. Thus, while we want to make sure, since we're going to drain this, we have to make sure we take the electricity off and we take the input water off, which I could have done here, but I'd much prefer to be doubly safe and turn it off at the big spot. Okay, so we've turned it off at both. We've got it places. on both. We didn't need to, but uh, I just feel better having double, double safe. And now I'll go and go in the house and I'll open faucets and get the pressure off the system coming this way. And we'll come back out. I'll go do that. We do. All right. The water is running inside. Thank you, Jerry. And you can, you can hear it gurgling as the pressure is being uh, taken off of this tank. And we'll get back. What I like to do is very carefully open this safety valve. And you can hear. Okay, we're gonna wait a little while because there's still pressure in there. That water is hot in the tank. It's just gone up here and gone over that overflow valve that we talked about earlier. Uh -huh. So we'll give it a few minutes. But in the meantime, since we have everything off, we can go ahead and open. I've connected this earlier, hose to the lower point outside, but we can go ahead and open the valve down here. So yeah. that valve takes a screwdriver to open. Yes, sir. And it's just a quarter of a turn on most of them. And now it's just like a glass of water. If you would turn it upside down, it wouldn't drain out. So we have to introduce air in the system. And that's okay. what I do here. At a certain point, it'll just go ahead and drain without overflowing. Air. Hit that toggle and the air starts coming in, which enables it to come out. I hear it. Here we go down here. What you want to do is pay close attention to sand, very fine sand. It won't be anything remarkable, but there are parts inside your hot water heater that uh, are expendable. There's an anode rod, and depending on your water quality, particles of that anode rod are designed to erode, and they will come out in the water as well. So that's why I say, you know, three years, I'd say that's probably plenty, unless you've got some issues of more breaking into your system, or maybe well water where you know it's uh, not quite as, as clean coming in. So there's a chance that in a little bit, we're going to see a little grit or something where that water is coming out so we'll know that uh, some debris is being flushed out of the tank. Right. Where I have seen it most often is as this runs down your driveway and hits the gutter and starts dissipating slowly, that's where you'll see a buildup okay. of a little bit of sediment if there is any. And if not, it's only yeah. 60 gallons of water. Good deal. And now while that's going on, we can go ahead. We've got the water off so we don't have to be worried about this. The only thing that might happen is that there'll be a little bit of water in the bottom of this. Um, if we get a towel, we can place it around here just to keep from making a mess, but we'll loosen that up, spin it off, and put the new one on after we pressurize it. Instruction manual, I'll put it over here. By the way, these closets where you see all this, this doesn't look like this ordinarily. Ordinarily, I've got pool noodles <laughs> and, and lawn chairs and uh, all sorts of stuff stuck in here. Once 
we've got it loose. Well, that was easy. Easy peasy. I can feel that there's water in here, so. All right. Now, I find it interesting. We said we weren't sure. However, I tipped that over and there was not water coming out the bottom, but yet there's water in the tank. It's a good indication that it's above that diaphragm where there should only be air. Okay. So a good move to replace. Yes, sir. There you can see some of the sand that's being deposited. I, who knows what it is? It's uh, some sort of debris coming out of the water tank. We can hear that water coming out. Tom's preparing the new tank. I love that uh, air pump that you have there. It's handheld. We use it for our bicycles. It's a Ryobi. It has a gauge on the back where you can read the uh, That's pretty handy. pressure. I wish I had one of those. That's yeah, it's very nice. nice. <laughs> Real handy. Yeah, we use it on all the bicycles. Now this, you said, is uh, brought to us with 38 pounds of pressure in it? Yes, sir. And you do, uh, there's directions included. It, it says that you should use a, a small pump, a hand pump, or something like this. Uh, I've done it with compressors. I would not tell you that that's the right way to do it at all because there's too much pressure all at once. And basically all you're doing, remember, is there's a piece of rubber halfway in this tank that goes across a diaphragm. And you simply want to match this pressure with air as to what your water pressure is in your home or within five or six pounds. So we know that the pressure here in the villages is running around 75 psi. So I'll take this up to 70. Well, they were pretty close. It shows 40 and a half. Just spin it on. There he goes. You have a lifetime of tools, don't you? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Should be good. All right, Jerry, well, it looks like we've finished draining. We got a little bit of sediment out of the water tank. Uh, we've got the expansion tank up with the correct amount of pressure and uh, put Teflon tape on the threads. So for now, I'm going to, first off, shut my bottom valve, which is just a quarter tone, turn again, um, clockwise. There we are. There and disconnect our hose so we won't have any more leaks down here. And then uh, if you will very slowly, sir, turn the water on to the house. I'm going to leave this valve off. And remember, we have the inside faucet still on, and we do that to get rid of any air bubbles and the surges in the system. All right. Water's coming on. Okay. Okay, Jerry, I went in the house, uh, turned off the faucet, made sure there's no air coming out through the faucets. There isn't. So the next step is to go ahead and very slowly turn the water on right here, which would allow the cold water in and start filling the tank. Now we're gonna leave this open for a little while. Um, this is a safety valve. And that of course is under the same system. If you turn the full glass of water upside down, it won't come out. Well, it 
it won't fill if there's air pressure in here. So we're gonna leave this open for a little while and let the water come up and then we'll go from there. Doing that slowly to avoid any blowouts? Yes, sir. Okay, Jerry, so we've checked for leaks to make sure our expansion tank is, is uh, sealed up. We've got all the waters turned on. We heard the tank fill up, and when it got to a certain point, we realized, okay, we got to quickly turn that off because the water will just keep on coming. That's a safety valve. But we needed to have that open in order for it to fill. Right now, it'd be fine if we wanted to go over and turn our hot water heater back on. The elements will start heating. And the last thing I'm going to do is check this to see what it sounds like this time around. Okay. Quite a little bit of difference. All right, I'll go turn on the electric. Job. Okay, so it looks like we're finished. We have the new tank in. The entire water heater was drained. And so we've, we've lost some sediment, which is a good thing. And we're back in business. And I can put my lawn chairs and uh, my pool noodles and everything else back in there. <laughs> All right, another job well done. Thank you very much. Tom is a whiz and uh, so thankful to have him as a friend and a neighbor. This is finished. Now, it may not be something that you want to tackle. You know, you can get a plumber or a handyman. Uh, don't call Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just another project you can tackle if you want to. And we're going to be bringing you some of these from time to time. Hope you enjoyed it. That's it. It was that easy. It took, what, about 30 or 45 minutes and uh, we got the job done with household tools. You don't have any soldering or anything of that nature. Now we have a new tank. I feel good about that. Awesome. The water heater's been drained. We don't have a water softener, so it's ready to go. So another job off the list. Check. 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 And you can do it too. Look on that description in the end of the video if you're interested in any of these products. If you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with your friends. Until next time. See you when you get here.